Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Tech Exception. Today, we have an exceptional conversation with a startup and how they disrupt uh, the observability world and how they're doing monitoring and log analytics and how they help us write better software and also monitor all the software that we create in production. I'm excited to bring to you uh, Jonah Kual, CTO of Logs.io. Hi, Jonah. Thanks for having me on today. I'm really excited about our discussion. Me too. I, you know, I'm ecstatic about everything that you're doing in Logs.io. I know you're dealing with massive amounts of data. When I think, you know, when people say big data, the first thing that comes to mind is, hey, loggings, right? Definitely, it's a big data problem, and uh, there's lots of different signals and data types to deal with. Uh, logs are among the more challenging ones, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, one of the challenges we see uh, as well. So how did you how did you become a CTO of Logs.io? What was your career path? Yeah, so I've actually worked at many different startups. Uh, I used to be more of a user running infrastructure operations, security, performance engineering. I'm, I'm an engineer at heart. Uh, I kind of switched career paths uh, a little more than 10 years ago, and I actually became an analyst at Gartner and uh, was actually covering this, this space because I'd bought lots of tools, and then I started to give people advice and write research and magic quadrants for Gartner uh, for, for over four years. And then I moved into the vendor space. So I've, now I've seen all uh, three positions, I guess, that you would see. And uh, it, at, in the vendors, I basically ran product strategy over at AppDynamics. I, I spent some time at Kentic and network analytics, a really interesting space at cloud scale. And uh, now I'm at Logs.io, and uh, we're building this, this great open source observability platform. Uh, really great timing in terms of where the industry is and, and what developers want, which is open source. Yeah, definitely. Developer wants open source and developer wants uh, stability and the ability to look into what's happening in production. So that's and monitoring and logging. It's it's one of you know the main tools that we have uh, in the world of software development to understand what's what's happening with our products, what's happening with our solutions that run somewhere in the cloud on some devices and machines. And this is basically where you come with Logs.io and you kind of disrupt this world and makes it much easier for us as developers, right? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that developers want is free tools, free stuff. I want to start playing with it. I want to try it. I want to experiment and learn and, and become smarter and educated and figure things out. And that's what we all love to do. And open source affords everyone. It doesn't matter if you have uh, a little instance on the cloud or on your laptop. Uh, People, anyone can get started with open source and build things and, and make ideas come to life. And this is why the cloud is so amazing for everyone, because it opens up all of these capabilities for, for the common folk to use. It's no longer, you know, only huge companies that have deep pockets. Everyone can afford to build great software and great technology. Absolutely. I personally love open source and supporting the community and, you know, giving back to the community a lot of the things that I, I work with. So how do you see, you know, there's a lot of open source, but it's also hard to build a business of the, on top of open source. Yeah. So how do you see the combination of how Logs.io take it and actually, you know, make it a successful business that it's, it's in its core, it's built on top of uh, open source? Yeah, I mean, when we rewind to the pre-SaaS era, it was a big challenge to make money because you have, you know, massive companies like Red Hat and they basically sell subscriptions and you just expect people to pay for support and that's your revenue model, which works out great for a very small number of companies that were able to execute on it. But now in the cloud, all of these wonderful companies can take open source or other technologies and build a cloud service. So it really takes the burden away from of running, scaling, and operating these technologies and puts it on to another company. So in our case, uh, for, for those that are either running ELK, you know, open source logging stack, 
or they're running Prometheus and open source Grafana, or whether they're looking at tracing technologies like Jaeger, which are all very popular open source tools, the challenge is you as a developer, as an engineer, you have a day job to build software for the business. And the more time you spend trying to make monitoring tools work, the more challenging your time is gonna be. You're gonna spend more time trying to keep this up and running and scaling it, uh, or you can find a company like us or, or many others uh, to, to run it for you. And we believe that an open source approach is, is the way that uh, engineers want it, want it to be and uh, where we see the market heading. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, ELK, so that's Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And I know a lot of companies uh, try to implement this on their own, but it actually means that they need to hire experts on Elasticsearch and experts on all these technologies. And sometimes, you know, it's not their main business. Uh, their main business is not to know how to uh, fine tune uh, Elasticsearch or any one of these technologies. And this is why it's it's fantastic that, you know, we have you because because you have the experts on Jaeger, Elasticsearch and all of these technologies. So we don't have to do that. Right. We can just focus on the business logic and make everything works. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely lots of companies that do similar things to what we do. I mean, I believe that we're doing things in a little bit of a different way that I think makes more sense. But uh, there's a really funny joke out there because Netflix runs massive elastic search clusters and generates huge amounts of data. There's a, a quote you'll find on the internet from, from quite a while ago that says Netflix is a logging company that streams movies, uh, which is pretty funny because of all the data they generate from, from their software. So. Yeah, just like people say, uh, McDonald's is a real estate company and you know not a fast food company, basically. Right. <laughs> Cool. So which, uh, are you supporting back open source? Are you developing your own open source maybe? Yeah, so we have a couple of projects that we built that help people with some of the data ingestion, things that we built for internal use for our release pipeline and for our data ingestion pipeline that are open source. But we also contribute to the Jaeger project, which is part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And we've really up-leveled our contributions. There's more and more coming from a handful of engineers on our team that are contributing back. And we believe that this is something that we have to invest in even more and double down on because for us, there's no conflict. We can build cool features in Jaeger, put them in open source, and then when people don't want to manage it, they come to us. And this is great. There's no conflict. It's not like we have to hide features. A lot of these companies that sell on-premises software and SaaS, they have a conflict. They say, if I give it away to on-prem, then are they going to come back to me? And for us, we don't have an on-prem business. We want to contribute to the community. And hopefully, if we can help you out, we're here uh, to help whenever it makes sense. Yeah, that's a that's a wonderful approach. I really, you know, admire everything that you do, and I I'm a big believer in uh, in community first and giving back to the community. And you know, if they come back and they need help, we're here to to help and to provide. Uh, and I know you also have a competitive edge uh, when it's related to uh, other observability and monitoring platforms. So, what is exactly that you do that gives this extra value to your customers? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of differentiators, but I would say the main thing that makes us different and really where all observability vendors are focusing on is AI and ML techniques. And these are really there to try to save time for the user, trying to automate what they're doing and make it easier for them to solve problems, to identify anomalous behavior. There's lots of different techniques in, in AI and ML that... Uh, that really can help a lot with data overload. And that's exactly uh, what we see in, in observability and, and what we see in a lot of big data scenarios too. So how do you, how do you integrate ML into your solution? What, do, what the extra features or functionalities that you, you give with your platform? Yeah, we have three main features that I would say are in the AI and ML space. And, and 
Uh, one of them is pretty standard, not too differentiated. Most of the logging tools do it. Uh, we do some pretty different things in terms of rolling up data and defining and finding patterns automatically. But the really interesting thing that we do is this feature that we call cognitive insights. And what it does is it really looks at the log data that you're generating and tries to identify specific problems that are being discussed in the community. And the idea behind it is, what do we all do? I just had a computer problem. Uh, I had an error message come up. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search for it, or I'm going to go to Bing and search for it, whatever your search engine of choice is, duck, duck, go. Uh, and, uh, and you're going to search for it and, and you'll hopefully find a discussion, maybe on Reddit, maybe on GitHub, uh, Stack Overflow, and people are going to talk about this problem. So what we've done in our solution is we've actually shortcutted this and we've basically identified these problems, pointed the user to relevant discussions, and they can get right into those discussions instantly. So it distills massive amounts of data to things that we see are problems that are happening across the customer base. Um, and it's a pretty differentiated feature. It's a unique approach to the problem. Um, and we don't want to just replicate the same things that, that other folks are doing in our market. So. Yeah, I really like this feature. I mean, it means for me as, you know, as a developer who is, you know, now on a, a weekly base or a monthly base need to monitor production and make sure everything is running correctly. And if there are exceptions, uh, you know, I'm going to get a phone call or anything in the middle of the night. And we have enough uh, horror stories of, you know, people uh, waking up in the middle of the night and need to fine tune or see what's going on in production and in logging. And when I can use this feature that's actually going to show me, hey, you know what, here is your problem. This is the logs. This is what you need to do. This is what people online saying. It saves me a lot of time, especially you know when it's 3 a.m. and someone calls me on the weekend saying we have a production issue. So I really, really appreciate uh, that you're building it and you're doing it. And on that note, uh, I know you also uh, collaborate very uh, closely with Microsoft and you work with different Microsoft uh, products. So how exactly do you tie everything together uh, to produce your solution? Yeah, so I mean, I'll start off uh, we we host our service on Azure, or at least parts of it. For many of our large customers prefer Azure, we run on Azure. So this is the first piece. And then, of course, we work with Microsoft in terms of being able to transact through Azure, and we're available on the Azure marketplace. So this is the business side. Now, from the technology side, uh, that hosting and what we do, we leverage the AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, to run our infrastructure. So uh, many of the services we run are in a microservices architecture. We run on top of Kubernetes and we leverage Azure, Azure for that. And that really cool feature we were just talking about that automates what you do when you're searching, we actually use the Bing public APIs for search. And Bing is one of the only search engines that actually exposes a public API that lets you programmatically use it. So instead of building a web crawler and doing all these things, we actually leverage uh, the Bing search engine to do some of this work for us. And it makes it a lot easier than trying to build a more sophisticated crawler. I've actually built those before and it's a really nasty problem to deal with parsing and trying to figure out uh, web content. And it's uh, much cleaner to do it through, through something like the API for Bing. So uh, super helpful to us. Yay! Glad to hear you. You like the Bing uh, API, and I'm, you know, I'm excited that you're taking it and doing it and making great products uh, with it. So we're super happy, and I know it also connects to different uh, cognitive services we have on Azure, and a lot of different ways that uh, people can enrich their data and and work with their data to add more information. Um, so looking forward at the future. Uh, where are you heading with Logs.io? What the future holds for Logs.io? Um, so we're working on some new services. I mentioned our tracing service uh, that's underpinned by Jaeger. This is right now in customer beta that's going to come out on the market. We're adding some new features onto our metrics and infrastructure monitoring product. 
And we're going to have a lot of exciting new features and capabilities that come out around that. Um, we're also doing more work with Microsoft, so stay tuned. There's going to be some cool announcements coming out with Microsoft in the next few months also that we're super excited about. And um, lots of things going on from a business and technology perspective over here at logs.io. So. Absolutely. Sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to hear all the good stuff you're you're producing and all the wonderful relationships and collaborations you're doing uh, with Microsoft. So thank you, Jonah, so much for joining us today. It was lovely to have you and thank you for sharing all your knowledge and expertise. And stay tuned and follow on everything that we do with basically on the relationship between Logs.io and Microsoft. Thank you very much for having us on. It was wonderful. Appreciate it.